bit of a problem here. I'm looking for the famous missing picture of the general, painted in 1705, worth a million dollars. I think that's it, but it may be a forgery, and I can't tell. It looks good to the naked eye. But eyes are often deceived. Ours certainly are. But because we use them so often, we tend to think that all animals see the world the way we do, in living colour. And of course they don't. Your cats and dogs see it mainly in black and white. And insects are like that. They can't see red. At least bees can't. To them, red looks black. And so a flower like that to an insect looks very different from the way it looks to us. And yet they can see things that we can't. They can see ultraviolet. Well, if that looks red to us, how does it look to a bee? Let's take the lights down a bit and see what the bee can see. Well, the bee sees that, because I've hit this with ultraviolet light from a lamp. Notice down the bottom, you've got immediately all sorts of bright streaks of light. They really act like a runway. They tell the bee where to land on the flower, and it crawls in, gets its uh, nectar, and flies off with a bit of pollen. And yet, in full sunlight, we don't see those marks at all. We just see a beautiful, pinky, streaky flower. The clues aren't apparent to us. Well, ultraviolet is wonderful. We'll never be able to see it, but at least we can make ultraviolet lamps that gun everything with ultraviolet light and heighten the sort of display that animals that can see ultraviolet can perceive. It's a very useful light too because it's used for sorting things. Sometimes rocks and minerals are made to fluoresce under ultraviolet. We can then pick out which is which. And I'm going to use it now because I've mixed up my felt pins. Some are felt pins that I just use for drawing. Others are highlighter pins which you've probably seen used for highlighting text when people really want to draw attention to something. They put a highlighter through it. Well, when you draw with all of those pens on a piece of paper, all you get is a lot of nice bright lines. And I can't, for the life of me, tell you which is highlighter and which is felt pen. I can't, but perhaps the ultraviolet can. Let's give it a test. And there you see a big difference. The highlighters have chemicals in them that glow or fluoresce under ultraviolet, and the felt pens don't. So every second line is a highlighter pen, even though, to the naked eye, they all just look much the same, like lines of bright colour. So once again, ultraviolet helps us there. How does it help us with the general? Well, just this way. A lot of paintings were done on old canvases. And although we can't see what was under the painting, ultraviolet will often reveal it. So let's go to our 1705 picture of the general and see what lay underneath. Down with the lights, but on with the ultraviolet. And suddenly, it's obvious. It says, eat at Joe's Cafe. Well, that's a bit of a tale. Because there were no Joe's Cafes around in 1705. This painting has been done on top of an old advertising sign, so obviously it's a fake. We can get rid of that. It's not worth a million dollars at all. What about this one, though? This is a modern painting, and this painter was known to paint on old canvases. It's unquestionably genuine. Let's see what lay underneath. Well, nothing much there, but with ultraviolet, suddenly something's revealed. If you take a close look, you'll see that it's a painting of a person. In fact, it's the missing general which is a bit of a problem, because the painting of the general is worth a million dollars, but the modern painting is worth a million dollars too. I can have one, but I can't have both. Still, that's a problem for me to solve, but at least I know the problem's there, because whether or not the general existed was solved with ultraviolet. Curiosity.